you got that now, yeah? Yep. Okay, so similar to, to Chris and Paul, really, obviously, initially it's sort of get your heads together, what are we going to do? Um, with no idea how long it's going to last. Um, we were keen to not get stuck into it too early, conscious that this, this could drag on for a while and not wanting to burn the players out because, you know, the danger of it getting really, really repetitive if um, we'd have gone full on into doing like, right, we're going to do a session at this time every week and everyone wanting a little bit of the players like they'd normally get. Um, so we sort of set out as an academy. Our, our first priority was that, you know, just, just get in touch with people. Um phone call to the players or for the younger ones, the parents, once a week, just, just check in that everything's okay at home, uh, that the lads are in a good place and, and the extended family are all healthy. Um, then we sort of moved towards, what the, you know, they're going to need to stay in some sort of condition in case we get back this season. And obviously the football season would run till sort of about a month ago anyway. So it would have been a really long break into next season. Um, so sports science department have sort of been running stuff through Strava. I think Chris said West Brom have been using that as well um, for the running. So we've had the goalkeepers getting involved in that so that they can be on the league tables with the lads. Um, some of the older ones have, have really got into it and some of the numbers they've produced have been unbelievable. Um, so just, just something different for them. Um, they've sort of had yoga. We've used something called Cisco, which is similar to Zoom. Um, they've had like live weekly yoga sessions. Uh, as well as sort of gym sessions with the, the strength and conditioning coach. He's, he's put that on for, for the older groups as well. Um, we've had quite a bit of personal development stuff going on, uh, like psychology, life skills stuff, any education around sort of holistic type stuff, and then some stuff with our nutritionist uh, going on as well. So quite a lot going on before it even gets to, like, are we going to do anything? So touched on Kev being on before, Kev's on the call listening. Um, we we kind of kept in touch with the players but didn't start to do anything direct with them for the first few weeks because there's a lot going on. Don't know what people's circumstances are at home and on top of us doing stuff with them, if, if they're at school or the scholars have got college stuff to do on top of that, it's, um, you know, you, you might end up doing too much for them. Um, so where we went with it mainly was was using the software I touched on before um, to hold like little webinars with them, split into different like groups of age groups, a bit like they might train. Uh, and then add, add the older ones, the professional development phase together um, and tasks on Huddle, um, which I'll come on to a bit more detail on what we did there. And then obviously sort of a need to do some sort of training um, just to, to keep themselves sort of in tune really with the goalkeeping. Um, we, we haven't done anything sort of prescriptive um, a big thing that we set out as a, as a coaching department at the start from from our head of coaching was you know the word ownership gets used a lot well you know this is a real good chance to encourage the lads to come up with their own things there's loads of stuff online for them to see if, if they're short of ideas to start with um, and, and I'd just say to the, the goalkeepers was look if, you, if you're really stuck get in touch and I can give you a few pointers but we sort of wanted to go more down the the path of well you know what can you show us that you can do and, and send it in and when we've had the weekly chats we might have sort of shared different goalkeeper sessions if, if they were happy for us to do so with the other goalkeepers sort of in their little clusters and um, which you know has been quite interesting to see what they've come up with really they've had like some coaching younger brothers because they've been serving for them and then they've let them have a go which you know an under 11 coaching his seven-year-old brother I'd like a lad who's had to go back home to Slovenia, having his mum practicing a tennis serve in the underground car park. They live in an apartment and he's tried to stop it hitting the wall. He's like not had anywhere to go and play football. So like a real variety of circumstances. So we thought, you know, a chance for them to, to be creative and come up with stuff. Uh, in terms of the stuff we've sort of done in the weekly chats that we started doing with them, they were doing stuff with the team as well. So we wanted to keep it short to like little 20 minutes and set them stuff to go away and do at the leisure for the next week to either present back or, you know, we'd show a whole collection of things they'd come up with together. So it was really trying to get them thinking um, about how we want them to play, but also some best practice stuff. Um, so the how we play stuff, it would, would be like we'd present our in and out of possession stuff to them, which we thought we'd probably not really done that in a classroom environment. We've just touched on it on the pitch with them because you're always trying to grab as much time on the pitch as you can and maybe wrongly thought 
going in a classroom would take time off the pitch, but obviously that's all we could do at the moment. So did that with them and then sort of sent them away, having shown them some examples to, to look back at their games over the season and, and maybe give two in possession, two out of possession clips and tell us what they were, to which, which bit of the, the game model are they and did they do it well? Could they have done better? Was it the best choice? And then had them presenting those back to, to the other goalkeepers in and around their age group in the little uh, meetings that we were having. Um, obviously, we didn't want it to be too samey, so we used a little bit of best practice as well. Um, and, and Kev actually came up with the idea of present a load of different goalkeepers doing a particular topic or theme that we might work on. So clips of that from games and not all good, some bad, uh, some indifferent and just have maybe 20 clips for them to look through and pick two uh, to then sort of feed back to the rest of the group the next week. And then the other one we did was we choose one goalkeeper, just have a variety of different actions being performed and then um, ask them to sort of talk about what the strengths might be, what areas that they felt, even though they're the best in the world, these, these lads might still be able to develop him. Um, and that was led to the sort of last task we gave them because we've given them a bit of time off in June. Um, which did naturally get anyway. Uh, sort of Kev came up with the idea of go away and produce a player profile on, on any goalkeeper that you want that's playing first team football. Um, and then they'll present that back sort of towards us getting back in the building, hopefully sooner rather than later. And then the idea behind that being is we'll probably take that forward then and get them to do that on themselves as part of the, the review process that we do with them. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of come on to that maybe a little bit more when we go through the post-lockdown stuff. Um, so that, that's probably been it, really, for goalkeeping. And then they've touched in with the outfield stuff. They've had like little skill schools going, and we thought it was important that they were involved in that and I encouraged them to, so that they were still sort of with their groups as well and, and being part of the team. So, yeah, that would be it for us. <laughs>